Pulling wine. You're live. Hi, you guys. This is Ginger. This is a surprise live show from Bermuda. I'm in an art gallery that belongs to Lisa Ann Rego. She's the artist of all these paintings. She's an oil painting artist. I met her eight years ago, and uh, she's been uh, moving on to various uh, forms of artwork, but her biggest uh, uh, sellers right now seems to be the uh, sailboats. And Lisa will be right back. She's in the restroom. She'll be right back. She's getting some lipstick. And you can see that the Ameris Cup is one of her um, most uh, f famous paintings, and these are her best sellers right there on the wall, the America's Cup. And, you know, when you're at a tourist location as an artist, you have to find artwork that's generic enough for it to go home and fit on the wall of, say, somebody that lives in Manhattan or Kansas. And so she's got a wide variety. She'll tell us about it. So like I say, she's in the restroom. We're giving her a chance to come um, uh, back from there so we can film. She has customers here. This is an open shop, so I want to make sure that we um, get enough footage of everything so that when she comes, she'll be talking to customers, I think, if, when they want her in. But what's exciting to me is that when you see a working artist, I want you to see that. See a working artist and what she's doing. You walk in here and you see these, oh, these are originally oil paints. She's got chaclays of these, which is our, our prints on canvas. All right. You can see the different type of artwork she does, but she keeps this beautiful Bermuda theme. I love the, you know, the colors in these and the rocks and the sky. Oh, beautiful clouds. She's really good with people too, and I think you'd really like to see that. And if anybody's looking for our artist, here she is, you guys. This is Lisa. Yes, here she is. We're live on on YouTube. Yes, uh, that's right. So welcome to my gallery. It's absolutely lovely to speak to you from beautiful Bermuda. And if you look behind me, you can see I've placed right at the back here a very important historical event that's just taken place, and that would be the America's Cup. And underneath it is, in fact, one of my celebrated pieces, which I look at you and smile at. It's called the Spirit of Bermuda. Bermuda is very, very colorful. And if you look very closely at the painting, you can see my particular interest in light and shadow and trying to create a world of uh, wonder in a sense by the way that I'm using shapes and colors. And Bermuda is just that, a very, very special place indeed. I like so, how you did the shadows on the sails and I love how you painted the boat. This is absolutely gorgeous and your reflections in the water. I can see why that's one of your best sellers. What are some of the challenges you face as a gallery owner of a, in a tourist area? I mean, are you here seven days a week? Yes. I'm going to come back up here to talk to you. Are you sit here seven First days? First of all, good to see you back here after yeah. 10 years. Yeah, I've worked very hard since you were here 10 years ago. I know, I can see that. So we met 10 years ago. Now, you know, it's hard yeah. to do an, run an art gallery and be an artist at the same time because when do you have time to paint? Because yes. you're here, right? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I, have, I clearly have the answer because of the amount of pieces here. So here's how it goes, Ginger. Okay. We'll have a high season and we're going to have a low season. In the low season, I've made the decision to step out of the gallery and to have someone here in my place whilst I paint at home or travel because I need a, also to be refreshed before I create, I need to somewhat have a break as well. So I see my, my life in two modes. Mode one is the act of speaking, which I enjoy and listening to you and what you think of the work. And the other phase in low season from November to March is where I start beginning new artwork at home in my studio in Bermuda. In Bermuda, and you're mainly an oil painting artist. Correct. So it, it takes you probably weeks in the drying time to get a painting done, right? It takes about four, three to four weeks to get a painting completed because of the intricate nature of what I'm doing. I know, and also, do you, do you work on several at once? I used to, but it was considered a fault on my part in Scotland. They corrected it. They said, you must finish at least one and then move on. So I might start somewhat the drawing on three, but I'll be very disciplined in letting myself finish completely one and then I move to the second. Otherwise, my mind is somewhat divided. Interesting. Because even I would have thought because of the long draw, drawing times that you needed to just work on several different ones. But well, that's interesting. Interesting, but I use a gel or a resin to speed up the drying process. In other words, uh, it takes about three to four hours to dry. 
Oh, that's great. And that's helpful to me because I can model um, some of the shades that you see in the sails and the tree within that three or four hour window, sleep, wake up the next day, it's dry. Well, that's awesome. That's, that's absolutely awesome. So, so that's a good point. I would think it would be tough on an island to even get art supplies. Do you, do you, can you shop on Amazon? How do you get your stuff? I like the hands-on approach to purchasing art supplies, but we have a, a better art store than ever uh, before. I opened a few years ago in Bermuda, which I, which I enjoy. But generally, I will purchase in England, in Sussex, where my, my home, uh, where my brother lives. And uh, famously of all, three years ago, I actually found my favorite art store in Sydney, Australia. Really? So having come out of the Sydney Opera House, you think I'm joking, I'm not, it's true. I went to a Brahms concert, came out of the Sydney Opera House, turned a few corners and found myself in front of the largest range of oil paints I've ever seen. And What's I, your favorite brand? My favorite brand will be Old Holland. Old Holland, all right, and they and they had it there in Sydney because yes. we have a lot of viewers from Australia yes. that watch. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so they may not know that. So well, that's I'm good. going to Australia in two weeks' time. Are you? Simply put, it's where one of my closest friends lives, who used to live here in Bermuda and now lives in Melbourne with other friends that live quite close by that once lived in Bermuda. So I'm visiting there and then traveling around, and then I'll go across to New Zealand to see where the America's Cup. Uh, trophy is now resting in Auckland, uh, New Zealand, so I'll see that as well. Oh, that's awesome. So Then I get back to work. Then you I, get back to work. Yes. Then, you're, then you'll be all inspired, which is what artists yes. need to do is travel. That's what we like to do is travel to get inspired. So we've been trying to talk Lisa, and I think we've got her convinced that she should have her own YouTube show. And, and um, I think that would be great. Don't you guys think that, uh, I think you'd all watch her if she was on, on YouTube? Wouldn't you guys? Yeah? And we'll get some comments. You write comments directly on our on this to Lisa herself. You guys were live, but when it goes, when we leave it up on YouTube, go back and write Lisa some comments because she'll be reading them. She can't read anything now. We can't really answer questions, even though we're live. But if you'll go back and write Lisa some questions, if you have questions yes, from they Lisa, would like Lisa, yeah, they would like you, and and they would, and so she's going to be reading your questions. So wait, you know, be sure to ask her some and um, tell her what you like about artists on YouTube and, and how why you think you, that might be fun for her. You guys, don't you think that would be that great? That would be a wonderful opportunity. And if I can, Ginger, can I share a very brief overview of my of how you, I came to We love computer? it. Can we do this? Yeah, let's so hear about could that. Could you follow me by the yellow building just, just here? Whoops, this is Lisa. quite a story. I hope you find this fascinating. But basically, I left Bermuda at the age of six to live, as you can hear, in England and then later in Scotland. I missed Bermuda quite severely. Came back here just in 2001, met up with my sister, who actually owns the jewellery shop that's opposite me here in the, in the mall. And uh, I began to notice uh, quite suddenly this type of subject, a yellow building. Bermuda's famously colourful. All of the buildings are differently coloured. And there it was, a lady passing a doorway. And it became, if you like, the Genesis painting. Lots of paintings followed, but this was the very first one I did. And strangely enough, it's actually quite impressionistic. After this moment in time, this soft pastel painting became uh, substituted with further ideas, which included sharper, clearer definition of details. And this would be using oil paints and fine brushes. And I have a great, great love for light and shadow. So as you look around the room, every wall has a different theme. Here's the architectural wall. You can take it in. And My most recent painting is actually the Sunset View, which is close to where I lived as a child. I lived in Warwick, Bermuda, and I used to fish from this dock, and I can remember well not being very good at fishing. But I would live in hope that one day I would actually catch a fish. But notice something very clearly. I have a passion for capturing reflections and shadows on buildings. With that in mind, I work in a series approach. I tend to do three of a kind. And I have created, after 16 years of dedicated work, through juggling like you can't believe, as you've indicated, Ginger, a lot of juggling to run a shop and to paint. But as you look around the room, one brush stroke at a time, that's my saying, one brush stroke at a time, we have this collection of work. 
and I have the joy of meeting people who come in here smiling every moment from the cruise ships or from hotels. And it's lovely to meet them. Show some of this work. We'll follow oh, you down. This oh, way. Look. Now, follow her down. Because this is a nice size gallery and you get lots of tourists who love it. Yes. So here we have a close-up view of the same idea of reflections on water and architecture. And here in Bermuda we have a very luminous form of light. I've noticed, I'm sure you have ginger, it's oh, very glowing. Word, luminous form of yes, light, that's it's, great. It's just wonderful. Can it, we use it, that yes, luminous. please. Mm -hmm. Luminous. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy it. Wonderful, interesting story for you. On this painting on the far right, my dad would sail past this as a child and say to me, Lisa, do not look at the yellow house, for it is surely haunted. And in fact, in this yellow house, the Wizard of Oz was illustrated. So Bermuda is a land of intrigue, of beauty, of mystery. And I had the great, wonderful opportunity to go out to the yellow house that I was once afraid of as a child to find out this greater truth that it was where the Wizard of Oz was illustrated. And a little boy called Andrew from my youth club, no less, because all the children in my paintings are known to me, is playing the subject of looking in awe at where the Wizard of Oz was illustrated. I patiently waited for the reflections to appear on the water and the boat I was on kept moving and interrupting the reflection of his boat. So it's quite a science, really, to, and pa of patience. Wait for the light. It's one of my statements. You, Wait you for the light. Lot, you do a lot of photographing here. I do. It's moving quite quickly, as you could imagine. So I work with photography, and then I'll make a sketch, and then a painting is made. So photography is very criti is critical to my process. So are you using your cell phone cameras now, or you have a fancy camera? What do I you do? simply use I simply use traditional film still. Yeah. And I oh, I have interestingly enough been using my uh, camera uh, on my phone, Ginger lately. Yeah, is that great? I'm quite surprised that it's of the quality, uh, uh, good enough quality to actually use. And I used it for the America's Cup painting, which is this one. Oh wow, that's beautiful. This is my, I became the officially licensed artist of the America's Cup. Oh, that's this, huge. This year. So, Congratulations. Thank that you. is huge, you guys. So, Isn't that gorgeous? The America's Cup. So I wow. hope you enjoy the way I've captured again the details of all these men struggling to try and play a part in history as to who would win the America's Cup. And uh, after several weeks, the painting was finished, sent to America, as all of my pieces are, to be super scanned. And on the super scanner, I have the best record possible to make one of these, which is a stretched gicle. So, wh where do you like to send your places to? New York, and I will send it to a place uh, in Long Island called Li Gicle. Li Gicle. Dot com. Dot yes. com. That's where you send your artwork. Yes. Well, we like to know that. Well, that is absolutely beautiful. What was the original size of this? The original size of this was thirty-three inches by twenty-three. Quite a large size. Quite a large size. So now when you're doing the detail on the boat, like the letters, what are, you, are you using a brush for that? Yes, I am. Yes, a very, very fine brush. And it was important to me, though it looks at first glance quite commercial, the branding and the names, I see it as an art form lettering. And I wanted to get this correct shape, so I am using uh, very um, medium and small brushes, very fine. You have a brand of brush that you like. I, I, various uh, brands, I would say. You, you don't have any particular, is there any particular main brand of brush that you Winsor like? Winsor Newton make a whole different, a range of proline. I enjoy proline brushes quite a lot, yes. Okay. But just, but people, people are going to want to know what Some you tips. use. And you're painting on canvas, obviously. I'm painting on canvas. I begin the process by using a wax pencil uh, to actually draw out and map out the main shapes. I then paint in the local colors in a very general sense. I then turn my painting and my photograph upside down in order to see the details and abstract the shapes. Another way of putting that, everyone, is that when something's the right way up, it becomes an object which is referenced by a word such as a boat or a face or a nose or an eye. When it's upside down, it's more obviously seen as a shape, and that's what I critically need to see in order to paint it correctly. So, so you paint all your paintings upside down, basically? Every single one of them. Isn't that cool, you guys? Upside down. How, how informative is this? Isn't that just awesome? And look at the, you know, the detail. Now, those lines are extremely straight um, on those, you know, yes. very crisp. But are you using anything like a, like a straight edge, a credit card, 
put in against your brush? Anything to get that straight line? <laughs> well, I do need to be able to use that credit card, but I will tell you my secret because art is all about, good artists will be transparent. It's simply this, blue painter's tape. All right, so she uses tape too. So we use uh, something called artist tape. Oh, you do? Absolutely, artist tape. Yes. And then my other trick I'll show you with you is yes. that they, um, Uni makes, a, a Stafford and now it's, a, it's all the same company, they make actually an oil painting fine pen. It's oil paint in a pen. And it dries instantly for when you're trying to letter. That's why I asked. Oh, that's fascinating. That's called that's... an oil painting pen. And you yes. better want it because it's on there once you do I it. I will. I will. I'll look up into that. Yeah. And as you unpeel this blue painter's tape, it doesn't uh, tear away on the yesterday. Well, that was good, right? Yes. That was good. I mean, we, we're up long enough for it to it's, get to hit the feeds, right? It says it's back again, so I can say we're goodbye. Back. So we should we say goodbye over here? <laughs> yeah, so let's come back and we're going to say goodbye, you guys. Um, Should I hold up a picture with the children? Yeah, hold up a picture with your children. Hold up a picture with your children. I love that, and that you do. Yeah, I think it should be... Does it matter if it's in plastic? No, I don't think so. Like that? Look at that. Look at that detail. Look at the way she does people. Isn't so, that just great, you guys? How fabulous is that? We're going to say goodbye to Lisa in Bermuda. And I'm going to come in here like this. Can you see me? All right, we're going to say goodbye to Lisa. We. This was such an adventure. I'm yes. so glad we got to see you. And we're yes. going to encourage Lisa to get on YouTube and, 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 and talk about oil painting and do some oil painting videos, yes, right? perhaps have some stories underlying my work and inspiring thoughts in life as well, which are often attached to these paintings. I love to share the stories. Awesome. All right. Bye, you guys. Bye from Bermuda.